fortunate to have Brother Tipton and his wife Gail here, missionaries to Nicaragua. And I don't have time to tell you a bunch of stuff, but I, I knew him when he was a young man, you know, and over here when he was working at uh, Winter Haven Baptist Temple. One of my best friends in the world at that time was Robert Hodges. And he was a tremendous man of God. I loved yeah. him. We, we uh, had a great time together. And uh, I wanted to say to you, you know, you pastored for 25 years in Fort Pierce. I still have uh, from Fort Pierce the paperwork that they sent me when I was in Baptist Bible College because I felt called to start a church there. Is that right? And that was in 1960. Wow. I still got it. I never went. <laughs> you know what I loved about it? It was a railroad town. Mm. And uh, my dad had been on the railroad all his life, and I just felt called there. But anyway, let's pray, and we'll ask God's blessings upon the service today. Brother Tipton will be showing a video, and then he'll be preaching for us. We're going to take an offering up, a normal offering, but if you want to give to the missionary work uh, for some of the things he needs, like one thing he really needs is a printer. And uh, for a $1,000, if anybody wants to buy that, you can do that. Or you can just give on it. Amen. And otherwise, if you want to give, we're going to give him an offering naturally from the church, but it did always be a blessing if you wanted to give. You could put it on the envelope, say, for the missionary and uh, Paul Tipton. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us, for the blessings of being in the Bible study and hearing the testimony of Brother Tipton down there and his wife working in Nicaragua. We pray now that you will bless the rest of this service and uh, may Jesus Christ be lifted up and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed assurance, uh, we're going to go to... Uh, 143. <laughs> <laughs>
back to God uh, of that which he's given you. It's kind of an act of worship. Amen. Be sure and you know, go back to the table before you leave and look at the, the, the display back there of the work in Nicaragua. Nick, Nick, <laughs> wherever it is down yonder, yeah. Nicaragua. Yeah, we've been supporting missionaries in Nicaragua for years, and uh, it's a great place. It's a, they need missionaries there. Yeah. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer, Brother Stephen. Would you lead us? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come to you and worship today. Lord, we ask you to bless all to give to the church portion back of which you've given to us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. As you give. Anyway, we uh, 
we enjoyed that too. Yeah, we've uh, so we we love the puffers, and they've been dear dear friends for so many years. And good to see them here, here, brother. Too. When I get to heaven, there's gonna be a host, you know, up there singing, uh -huh. and uh, I'm gonna be in the front row. But Bob and you ain't gonna be able to see them. They're gonna be so far back. They're gonna because the Bible says that he is first will be last and he is last will be first. And since I can't sing now, I know I'm going to be first when I get up there. <laughs> but they, they, they're singers, you know, so they won't even be able to be heard when they get to heaven because they're going to be so drowned out by us good singers. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we do enjoy them. Well, for those of you who have come in and did, wasn't here during the Sunday School Hour, we shared our uh, ministry, what we're doing in Nicaragua. And what we are doing we, we, we're training pastors. That's, that's what I went down there to do. And then we help these pastors start churches. I'm convinced that a national, you train a national and you put them out there starting churches, they're much more effective than American missionaries going and starting churches. I believe that. And I've seen that happen all over the world where, where, where nationals, they, they, they know the culture, they know the people, they, they know the language. I'm, I'm still working on that. I have to still preach with an interpreter. I teach with an interpreter because I'm not fluent enough yet in the language to do it without one. And don't know that I ever will be the rate right I'm going. But uh, we, uh, uh, you know, but you, you put a national out there, they're, they're much more effective. And so that's what we do. We train the nationals. And, uh, and, and first of all, we had to get them saved. But then we, <laughs> we train them and then we, uh, we help them uh, start churches and we, we, we teach them as they go. We, we work alongside those pastors, of course, but it's them that they understand they're the pastor, they're the responsibility, and so we've got six churches going now in Nicaragua. I shared a little bit with you about the uprest that's going on in the country now, but I want to tell you, through all of this, our churches are growing by leaps and bounds. And, and, and one of the reasons, when things like that are happening in your country, you know, people are more they're more sensitive to the things of God. People that, you know, there, some of them are searching. So these guys are going out winning souls. And, and uh, it's, it's easier to win souls in, 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 in a time when, when there's so much uncertainty in, in, in your country. Some of you might remember back when 9 11 came, maybe back in those days. You know, funny thing, the first few weeks after that, churches were filled with people, Amen. you know, because uh, people were, were, were more concerned. And so these guys are out there winning. So we have one church that they just built a brand new building. And they built this building without any help, outside help. They did it themselves, which was, which for Nicaragua, wow. very unusual, poor people. Now, of course, the Lord did send one man there into the church that assisted a lot with that. He's a Nicaraguan, but he, he played, played, played professional baseball here in the States. Back, he's, he's in his 70s now, but back in the years, he, he did play for a couple of pro teams and made a lot of money and saved his money, I guess, and, and he went back to his home state and, and he got saved when he was here in the States and got grounded and he, he was seeking for for, for the right time of church. Amen. So when, when Brother Hector went to hit their town and started the church, and it was a Baptist church, this guy got involved with him and, and he's been a blessing and he, he helped him a lot get this building up. But they built this building and I would say it would probably see a couple hundred people. We got a slide presentation, I mean, I mean a uh, picture of it on our things, but you won't be able to, all you'll see is the, the, the picture was taken from the back of the auditorium, and you might see, if you see one of the pictures, you'll see all these people sitting, but you'll just see the back, but you can tell there's a lot of people there, and that's what was taken in that building. They filled that building up the first Sunday. Uh, so, you know, the churches are growing, and, and God is blessing, mm -hmm. and we can't wait to get back down there and see some more get started. But that's what we're doing. We're training pastors, and then we assist them in starting the churches, and then we help them. Of course, we, we, we were there right there to assist them, and then we, uh, we, we help teach the people the true doctrine, uh, you know, and and, uh, and so that's, we, I, I run the school, teach the school, my wife feeds the pastors. They like her, when I, my daughter went down to visit us here, Back in April, I was telling the church about that the day the uprest started, actually. But while she was there, we took her around our churches and introduced her to our pastors and, 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 and the people we work with every day. And so the, without fail, it seemed like every pastor was saying, you know, we love your mom and dad, we love, but, but we love your 
your mom the most because she's the one that feeds us. <laughs> so, you know, she's much more important than I am. <laughs> but anyway, she does she does the cooking, and when the guys are there at school, we, we feed them, we take care of them, and and she does all of that. And uh, and she just, of course, she goes with me sometimes. Up, I mean, she don't like to go up the mountains because she don't like that, you know, driving around curves and going up hills. And some of those roads are pretty narrow when you're looking down, you know. And, and I love it, but she don't. So, but she does go with me on occasion. She'll go. And, uh, but most of the time, we're up there doing teaching and, 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 and working with the churches. And it's me and my interpreter uh, that, that does that. But we, we do all that. So we're busy while we're there. We stay busy all the time. Never enough time to do what you really need to do. You'll see the video here we're going to show. And, and it'll start out, it's the setting of our classroom. These guys, we always start out with a song every day. And, uh, you know, they, they'll sing a couple songs. You'll see that. Uh, and then uh, then it'll go into, uh, uh, there's some testimonies. I, I've had the pastors just give some testimonies. And we, have, of course, had to edit and sh shorten them up because these guys, they talk for five minutes. I tell them, you know, 30 minutes, uh, 30 second testimony, and they give me five minutes testimony. So, you know, and then you'll see a lot of pictures at the end. That's the My name is Hector Escoto. Estoy agradecido con Dios. I'm so glad with the Lord. El Pastor Paul y su esposa. Pastor Paul and his wife. Han sido de gran bendición en mi vida espiritual. They have been a great blessing in my spiritual life. Me han ayudado mucho en el ministerio. They has helped me a lot in the ministry. Soy pastor en la iglesia de Teustepe. I'm a pastor in the church of Teustepe. Y hemos iniciado un año de clase con el Pastor Paul. And we have begun uh, the first year of class with Pastor Paul. Aunque hace varios años, even though many years ago, el Pastor Paul ha venido trabajando conmigo. Uh, Pastor Paul has been uh, working with me, enseñándome una gran verdad, teaching me a good truth. Yo no tenía conocimiento de la Biblia. I didn't know. I didn't know much about Bible. Pero ahora he adquirido más conocimiento. But now I have acquired he knowledge. He encontrado una doctrina sin error. I have found a doctrine without mistake. Y he podido dar una enseñanza mejor a las iglesias. Now I'm able to teach well to the churches. My name is Jerónimo y de Jesús Polanco. Y soy un estudiante de aquí de la escuela. And I'm a student of Estamos the school. Estamos muy agradecidos con todos los aquellos colaboradores allá en el extranjero. And we're so thankful uh, of those supporters in the, in the States. Agradecemos todo lo que han hecho por nosotros. We thank everything, everything you, has done, you have done for us. Agradecemos a Dios por el profesor que nos ha mandado we aquí en Nicaragua. We praise the Lord for the teacher we have here in Nicaragua. Un buen profesor. A good professor. Que nos está enseñando. The one is teaching us. Y tiene una manera muy bonita de enseñar. And he has a real kind way to teach. Agradecemos a su esposa, quien se encarga de darnos la alimentación. The one is feeding us. Y aquí nos sentimos contentos y cada día estamos aprendiendo más. And I think we feel very glad here because every day we're uh, learning much 
much, much and more. Gracias a Dios. First of all, I thank the Lord. Y también a la familia de Paul. Also, uh, Pastor Paul's family. Por habernos dado buena satisfacción de enseñanzas. Because now we're sa satisfied Completa. of the teaching. Completamente puritana de la Biblia. Totally from Bible. De lo cual he aprendido. Which I've learned a lot. Cosas muy verdades. Very true things. Como decir, la salvación que no se pierde. Like salvation that cannot be lost. La verdadera enseñanza de la institución de la cena del Señor. The true, the true teaching of the supper of the Lord. Y cómo entender los sermones bíblicos. And how to understand the sermons. Así que por lo tanto. That's why. Agradecemos las iglesias. We thank all the churches. Que han enviado a esta pareja. That have uh, sent this couple. Que ha sido couple, de gran significado para mí. That is great. That they have a great meaning for por me. Por haber encontrado la iluminación correcta. Because now I have the good time of Dios. the Lord word. Y esperamos. Uh, we hope que esta enseñanza continúe. This teaching is keep on. Siendo luz. Being light. A los que desconocen la perfecta palabra. Those that they don't know the word. Mi nombre es. My name Alfredo Hernández is Valles. Alfredo Hernández Valles. Mi residencia es Quipulas, Matagalpa. I am from Esquipulas. Le damos gracias a Dios. We thank the Lord. Por este ministerio tan hermoso. For this ministry so good. He aprendido la cosa. Where I have que learned no sabía. things that I didn't know. Me alegro mucho I'm so de glad que el profesor that, que the, el pastor that Paul, my professor, the one is Pastor Paul, que Dios lo ha mandado. the one God has sent. Y por eso a Dios That's why I thank the Lord que he that I have learned de él. something ahora me siento came, that came from God. Now I feel satisfied. For being y reconocer de la palabra de Dios, knowing God's word, y saber interpretarla para poder enseñar, and know how to interpret uh, God's word and teach it. Y le doy gracias a Dios porque ha mandado al pastor Paul, and I esposa, also thank the Lord that, that he sent Pastor Paul since he was his wife, and he has been patient with us teaching us. Mi nombre es Ernesto Prado. My name is Ernesto Prado. Pastor de la Iglesia Bautista Puerta del Cielo. I'm a pastor of the Baptist Church uh, Heaven's Door. Estoy convencido que el Pastor Paul. I'm convinced that Pastor Paul fue enviado por Dios a este lugar. Was sent by the Lord to this place. Para traernos una enseñanza. To bring us a teaching. Completamente basada en la Biblia. Totally based on the Bible. Ha sido de mucha bendición. He has been a great blessing. Eh, en el seminario in this school en el cual están capacitando pastores the one is playing pastors para que podamos seguir adelante that way we could keep on anunciando esta doctrina announcing this doctrine eh, basado en el fundamento de la Biblia based on Bible fundamental que el Señor le bendiga God bless you Amén Amén
Amen. All right. Well, we're going to be looking this morning. I find it in the book of Luke, chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. A story that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It's a well read, well worn story about the Good Samaritan. And uh, I'm gonna, I've preached probably a hundred times from this passage of scripture, and every, every message is different. Of course, my wife will tell you every message I preach, no matter if you use the same outline, it's still different. She says I never, never preach the same thing twice, but God gives you different stuff, amen. But what, we're gonna be looking at this story about the Good Samaritan in a little different light this morning. God gives us these parables and these stories to teach us some things, and they have many different representations to them. This good story about the Good Samaritan, of course, the, good, the, the, the man had gone out and he had fell among thieves. Is on his way, of course, from uh, uh, you know from Jericho, and he fell among the thieves, and they beat him and 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 robbed him. And the Bible says they left him for a half dead. And just no, didn't care, no compassion. And of course, a preacher, or a priest comes along, and he looks down at him and says, "Boy, that's an awful sight. I don't want to have nothing to do with that." And he walked about. And says he crossed over and walked by him on the other side of the road. And then the Levite comes along. Levite. These are these are religious fellows, by the way. Priest and Levite. Priest represents religion. Levi represents the law. Neither one of those will help you. I mean, it's good to know them. They ain't going to help you. Levi comes along, looks down. He can't. He he he, he, he said, "I can't do nothing for him." And he crossed by him the other side. And then this Samaritan comes along, and he looks down and he says, "Boy, that's pitiful. I need to help that guy." Isn't it interesting that this guy was a Samaritan? When you think about what a Samaritan is, you know, nobody liked love. Jews didn't like Samaritans and they didn't like the Jews either. <laughs> because they just did they you know they what a, a Samaritan was actually was that was they were a mixed breed. A little bit of Jew, a little bit of everything else. You know, they were they were all mixed and so they were mixed breeds, and so they were they were rejected. And the the, the people you remember when the Lord said, told his disciples, you know, the woman at the well, he says, told his disciples, I have needs. I, I must pass through Samaria. They, they could understand that. Why would you want to go to Samaria? Why would you want to have anything to do with those Samaritans? This is the disciples. This is the way they were thinking. I mean, they were, they were a very prejudiced group of people. You know? But the Lord loved them. But of all the people, the most one of, one of the most disliked people in the world comes along. By the way, that's the class that we, we Christians are beginning to be, aren't isn't it? Some of the most disliked people in the world, even in our own country. But that's another good message. But he comes along and he looks down and he. The Bible says he had compassion on. And I'm going to build from that this morning as I consider this Samaritan. And we liken them, we've likened them, you know, you, you, can, you can draw many comparisons from this scripture. And you liken this, this, this good Samaritan, what we all ought to be as Christians. But I'm going to look at him in the light of a missionary this morning. Let's begin reading in the scriptures here at verse number 30. It says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, he came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. 
And he went to him, and he bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine, and he set him on his own beast, and he brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these thinketh thou was a neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, now we come to you this morning and we thank you for the privilege of being in this church once again. Lord, being here many, many years ago in the early days of this church. Lord, I think back about those blessings and, 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 and the friendship that Brother Tom Lee was to this young preacher. And Lord, I just thank you for for knowing him and Lord being having the joy of uh, knowing a little bit about this church and having spent some time here back in those days and it's good to be back today and Lord I want to be a blessing to the people so Lord I pray that you might use this time and this message to, to speak to us and uh, we'll thank you for our Jesus name amen mm. <clears throat> now <clears throat> I want to liken this, this Samaritan this morning to, a, to, a, to a, what a missionary ought to be. And by the way, let me say this. We all ought to be missionaries. Yeah. Yeah. In right. fact, if you're saved, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're called to be a missionary. The difference might be where we minister, but we're all responsible for, for witnessing to people and to sharing the gospel and to helping people. That's what missionaries do. And we all ought to be. There, a lot of churches have these signs, you know. You see them. We used to have one in our driveway, going out of our driveway, that says, you are now entering the mission field. Right. When you leave the premises or you leave the building of a church, you're going out into the world. And that's the mission field. This, this, this area here, Melbourne Beaches, is your Jerusalem. It represents your 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 Jerusalem. Right. Acts chapter one verse eight. You know, just another part of the Great Commission. He says, "Go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the world." Right. Now, see in Nicaragua, that's the other most parts. Samaria. You know. A lot of times I'll hear people, you know, they, they, they build the analogy, Jerusalem's your city, Judea is your state, Samaria is your country. But really, you think about Samaria, as we talked about these Samaritans, they, they were an unloved people. And so I've always likened that into going to the down and outers, the unloved. You know, we're places full of them, aren't they? Everywhere you go. My wife's mother passed away here a few years back. And, but she, before she passed away, she was in a nursing home for about four years. And my wife went every day, every day. She went and she took her food because she didn't like that nursing home food. She made her meal every day, took down her to that nursing home. And she would go down every day. She'd get off work. She'd take it. She, she worked just up the road in the doctor's office, not too far. So she'd get off work. She'd go spend a couple hours with her mama every day until she died. But you know what sad thing was? My wife, she also got to know all about, I think everybody on that wing of the nursing home, she knew them. She'd go and visit them too. She'd shared her food with them. And she got to know all of them. She got to know all the nurses and everybody there. But the sad thing is, my wife was sharing with nobody. Nobody visited them other people. Very few of them had anybody that come visit Nursing homes full of people. I mean, some of them's kids live right in town. They go put them in a nursing home, and they say, "We're gonna come see you, Mama, and never, never see them again to maybe Christmas or Easter." You know, forget about them. Nursing homes are full of people like that. Yes. Jails, and you know, I mean, I've been, I've ministered in jails, and you go in there, and I tell you what. They're in a place where, hey, they're, they're, they listen. And uh, you know what? Some of them, they don't respond. Some of them get saved. They have to call it jailhouse religion. They get saved to get back out in the world. But you know what? There's some of them, they make decisions. One of my best men in church, Lake Wells, was he got saved in prison. 
When he got out of prison, man, he started serving God. Amen. I know a lot of preachers that got saved in prison. And a lot of the guys we deal with in Nicaragua got saved in prison because somebody cared for them. Samaritans. And then, of course, the other most parts of the world. But we're all missionaries. We should be. The difference is whether you're going to be a good missionary or a bad missionary. That's the difference. Are you really serving and are you doing what you can do for the Lord? Now here is this, this Samaritan comes along and he sees this guy who he, he was the thieves had robbed him and beat him and left him half dead. Let me tell you something. I meet people every day, and you do too, and Nicaragua is full of them. There are people that the world has beaten down. That's right. And they've robbed them. They've robbed them of their self-worth, their dignity. They've robbed them of, of, of caring about anything. You go out anywhere in, in, in this city, and you will see people every day, and we have a tendency, and I'm just as bad as anybody, about prejudging people best, based on appearances, don't right. I mean, you walk along, you see somebody got your you know, rings and stubs and whatever they call them hanging out every place on their head and shaved head and tattoo. I, I've seen <laughs> seen a guy at church, uh, one of the churches we was preaching in a couple weeks ago. I mean, he was bald headed and he was tattooed from all the way down. I, I'm sure I didn't see him with the clothes off, but I'm sure he probably has looked like everything you could see was full of tattoos. He looked freakish. You know what? He's a soul. Amen. Somebody had won him and brought him to church. And he was right. there that night. Amen. Praise the Lord. He was ugly. But you know what? I, I tell young people all the time, you, you ought to think about 20, 30 years from now when you start getting those tattoos, you know. I mean, some people regret it, you know, but gotta be and so this guy was ugly, but he, he was saved. Somebody led him to the Lord. Amen. Nobody cared for him. But we have a tendency to see people like that in the world. And just like the priest, just like the Levite, just walk around them. I mean, as I, as I said earlier in, in Sunday school, those of you who weren't here, I, I told that how Nicaragua was full of missionaries. They got missionaries of every stripe. They got some good missionaries, though, too. You know, they got, they got a bad, they got some that are just to do the social work. And, and, and all that, but they've got some people that care. They're there, and they're doing a good job. But they won't. They don't go. They don't venture down into the areas we minister in. We minister in people. That community I was telling you about, right there near the airport, just on the outskirts of Managua, never seen a missionary. Mm. Never. And yet, brother Jones will tell you, you know, he he supported missionaries in Nicaragua over the years. A lot of them go down there. But they don't go into those areas. You saw the picture there of that, those areas. And, and they don't look safe to we Americans. And so therefore, we don't feel safe. But I want to tell you, those are some of the most loveliest people you ever meet. Mm -hmm. We've got dear friends we made that they're just poor. They're not bad people. They're just poor people. Yeah. They don't have anything. But you get, let me tell you something, they get saved and they're some of the happiest people you ever meet. Amen. Amen. They don't have a thing. They sleep on dirt floors. Some of those people don't have a, don't, they, they, they have dirt floors, all, almost all of them got dirt floors, but they, some of them don't even have furniture. They have, they'll spread out a pallet or something, or canvas on the floor and that's where they sleep every night. But they get saved and I want to tell you something, they, they're happy. They love the Lord. They got something to live for. Amen. Amen. It's just like you and I when they get saved. Right. It changes their, them. And, 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 and those people, you know what, they know. When you go in there and start talking to them about God, they know they need something in their life. Amen. You go across the street here about anywhere along this road here, and you'll find people have no interest in God because they don't need God. They got everything they need. Yeah. But one day they'll realize how much they needed it. Amen. But here comes this good Samaritan. Now I want to show you something about it. He took the time. He knelt down. He realized this man needed some help. He was, a, he was about to die. But he says, and you know, there's people out there, they're, they're just this far from death. Just this far from death. All they need is somebody to tell them about the Lord. Somebody to love them. 
He doctored his sores, his wounds. Means he got his hands dirty. Got got some blood on his hands. I hate that. I I I, I have a hard time even if, if I pass an accident on the road. If there's other cars, for, and I know they got enough help, I, I just keep on going. I, and I, I don't like that stuff, that bloody stuff. I could never work in a doctor. My wife worked in one for 17 years. I could never work in a doctor's office. One of the worst things I had to do, Brother Jones, was make hospital visits when I was pastor. I didn't want to go to the hospital. I don't like to see people suffering and sick. This, this guy gets down and gets his hands bloody. He gets his hands dirty. He doctors him. But he didn't just stop there. I, I I used to have, you know, we always were soul winning in our churches. And we'd go out soul winning. Sometimes people come back to the church and go, oh, brother, bro, 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 Pastor, I, today we won five people to the Lord. Man, we're so excited. And I would rejoice with them and say, praise God. And then I would say, you got their names? So we can follow up on them? Oh, no, I didn't think they could. I didn't get no names. I just, we just bet them on the street. You know, the Bible says when first you say they are bathed in Christ. Mm. That's right. They, mean, they need to be taken care of. Mm. New baby. They need to be trained. They need to be taught. They need to be fed. Mm. They need to be nourished. They need to be loved. People lead them by the Lord just, just, just for the sake of getting them, you know, getting chalking up to them. I, hey, I've done it. As a young pre preacher, I've Took that kind of stuff too. I was kind of raised with that mentality in the beginning that, well, all it is is just, just get those numbers. God's going to measure me by how many souls I led to the Lord. That ain't so. But that's the way I, a lot of people think of it, you know. But I want to tell you, what kind of mother would give birth to a baby? And then after she took that baby, said, yep, that's a beautiful baby. I'm sure glad that's over with. Their world, take care of it. You think that baby's going to be loved by the world? You think she's going to be taken care of and fed? And pro no. Well, probably there's somebody to take it in and do it. But listen, when we throw them out to the world, we're giving them to the devil. When a person gets saved, they need a place to come. Here comes this mission. And he's a, he takes care of them, and he picks them up there, and he puts them on his own beast, his own donkey. He walks, he sacrifices, he suffers a little bit to help this man. And he carries him to the inn. That inn, by the way, is like a church. He takes him, he done what he could do. <clears throat> he did what he could do. But he knew that he needed more. Mm. And so he took him to where he could get the help that he needed. That's what that's what church that, that by the way, that's why the Lord set up the church. Why he brought it into existence. He instituted the church. So so people can be people say all the time. I hear, I know you oh we don't need church. We don't have to go to church to be saved. You have to go to church to be obedient. Yes. You can be a disobedient Christian and miss out on the blessings of God. But if you obey the word, you read in the Bible and see how much he has to say about church. That's right. The Bible says he loved the church and he Amen. gave himself for it. Right. He instituted the church because he knew that it was important. You get people saved, you got to have a church to get them into. That's why I wept when we flew out of Nicaragua that day and I knew there was 40 people that had accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and not a church to put them in. Who's going to take care of them? Who's going who's to love them? No place to put them. It broke my heart. He took him to the end. But I want to tell you something. He didn't stop there, did he? No. He said to the innkeeper, take care of him. Do what you can for him. He said, and I'm going to leave. I got, I got, but when I come back, he, he took out some money. He spent his own money. He gave of his money to the innkeeper. He said, take care of him. <coughs> and when I come back, he said, Whatever you spend beyond that, I'm going to give it back to you. I will repay you. What, was he, what did he do? He made a commitment. It went be, 
beyond him. He could have stopped, doctored him up on the side of the road, and went on his merry way and never thought anything about it, and it would have been more than anybody else did. That's right. But he didn't stop there, did he? He cared for him. He got him to a place where he needed to be so he could get what he needed. And then he, he sacrificed his own finances. But beyond that, he made a commitment. He committed himself. When I come back, I'll pay you whatever you spend. You didn't know what it's going to be. You know, whatever it is. Amen. You know, that's what that's what missionaries do. They go over to these, we, like we went to Nicaragua, and they go all over. You know, it's a commitment. Now, some of them come home early. They get over there and find out it ain't, they, it ain't what they thought it was. You know, but some of them go for the wrong reasons, too. But there's a lot of good missionaries out there in the world. Right. When we went to Nicaragua, we, we knew what we were getting into. I'd been working down there already several years. And boy, and my wife had been down there with us many times. So she knew exactly what we were getting into. It wasn't like we were going into this thing blind. We knew what it was. In fact, when the Lord started talking to my heart about it, I figured my, my way out was my wife would never want to move to a third world country. I mean, she had it too good all, all these years. We, we, we own a nice home right here in Fort Pierce. Got a little apartment in the back of it. In fact, that's where me and my wife stay now when we come back. We stay in the little apartment in the back. My daughter lives in my house with her two daughters, and they take care of the house. And they even give us a little bit of rent money, so that helps out. But when we come home, we stay in an apartment. But it's a nice three-bedroom, two-bath home. Nice home. Right there near the church, under some nice, beautiful oak trees. Different air conditioning. When we went to Nicaragua, we knew we were going, we, we wasn't even going to have air conditioning for a while. God said, go to Nicaragua. So my wife's not going to want to do that. So I can say, Lord, my wife won't go. So I go talk to my wife, honey. So what would what would you say if I told you I think God's calling us to Nicaragua? You know what my wife said? She said, I said, she said, I, I would say we better go to Nicaragua. <laughs> Took away my excuse. Here's what she said. I said, well, you know, it's a third world country. And, you know, it's probably not going to be as safe. She says, there's people get killed on the street every day in Fort Pierce. Wow. Yeah. Drive by shooting. Yeah. She said, I'd feel safer in Nicaragua in the will of God than I would here out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for a good one. Mm hmm. Yeah. I couldn't minister. Right. But friends, that's what you know, all of us are missionaries. Not just missionaries. We're missionaries in Nicaragua. You're a missionary here. And they need good Samaritans. There's people out there every day. They've been beaten by the world. They've been stripped. They've been left half to you. They need somebody to <coughs> and care for them. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. I certainly do need the gospel of me. That's a blessing to me, I'll tell you right now. What God can do with people that's unbelievable, we turn our lives over to Him. Yeah. Let's everyone stand and I'm going to lead us in prayer. Please, and then we're going to sing a couple of verses that God spoke to your heart today. We all need to reflect upon our lives right now. And if God spoke to your heart, you ought to come and say, I'm willing to do what God would have me to do. Wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we've had to be here today and to hear this missionary speak from his heart. And we just pray that you would bless him and his wife and the ministry there in Nicaragua. Meet their needs and bless them and use them in your service like never before. And I pray that you would bless us here that we would get the vision to reach our community and the surrounding areas with the message of Jesus Christ. And we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Okay, two, uh, just stay. Yeah. preaching of the Word of God and by the by even the testimony of what God's doing in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. I've never been there but I've had a lot of dealings with preachers and friends from there <coughs> and I have a, I love those uh, people and the place there and this really touches my heart mm -hmm. and I want you to remember that tonight at the conclusion of the services we're going to have our monthly fellowship and it's sort of a celebration of people's birthdays and anniversaries, as y'all know. And we've got um, three ladies today that have, a, have had a birthday. Darlene over here on the piano and my wife, Laura, and Don back there. They've had birthdays in September. And uh, we're going to celebrate their birthdays tonight. We're going to have something great. So if you can, come back tonight. We'll be here at 6 o'clock. I'll be preaching tonight. And I'm going to preach something kind of like an in, uh, a message, like a, a mission message myself called Increase Our Faith. And boy, we need it. Do you know yes. that? We need our faith. In